Hey everybody, welcome to the cast. I'm your host, Matt. I'm your co-host, Steve. I'm the substitute teacher, Hip Dad. All right, so we've had a good day already, guys. It's gonna be good. Uh, thank you, Hip Dad, for hopping in and report. You you have a uh, big shoes to fill. You have to fill both Josh's and Tyler's shoes because neither one of them have graced us with their presence. Apparently, it's all your fault because you kept them up with <laughs> zero AT all night. Yep, it's all my fault. Did you at least beat them? No, Zany got Zane. I mean, Josh got beaten, and Zany come after me in the last game. Yeah. Is DT still so? When you guys play with DT, is he still so good that he just beats everybody all the time? No. So you guys got gotten better. That's good. Yeah, we we have some decent games when DT joins in and we team up. It's it's a lot of fun that way. I still have not paid, played the game, so, other than one no, time. No, we're, we're we're wanting to get you to uh, play by play. I know. I tried. It was horrible. It was, oh, okay. it, it, it was not a good commentary because you, you can't have someone. It'd be like having someone who's never seen a game of American football come in and try to commentate American football. That's basically what right, it was. Right. Or, or having me try to commentate soccer. I'd be just like, why is the clock moving in the wrong direction? Yeah. <laughs> and also, I got my dad to play it. Now, my dad doesn't annoy me as much anymore because he's got his teeth sunk into zero AD. So many... Uh, ways to create a skirmish game. Oh, nice. Cool. Yeah, nice. Yep. All right. So, welcome to the Linux cast. We're, we're, we promise not to have too many tangents like that one, but I'm sure I won't hold up to that promise. But uh, we talk about Linksy things, as we usually do. But before we jump into the main topic for this week, we're going to go around the horn and talk about the things we've done in open source this week. So, Steve, why don't you take us off first, please? Okay. So I've been up to a lot these past few days, uh, especially the past few days. I'm going to show something on the screen now that I can, because I'm using OBS virtual camera, thanks to everyone who helped. I've been up to this. As you can see, I am on Hyperland, and that's going to surprise a lot of people, uh, because I'm the one who kept saying I wouldn't touch a window manager with a 10-foot pole. Well, uh, I'm touching one right now, and not only that, if you look at my uh, browser, I even gave uh, the developer of that of those uh, dot files a few notes on what to work on. Very technical. So, some are very technical, others are not. So, uh, but and I even offered to host some of the AUR packages that they use in their script because having it build all the packages from AUR one by one makes it take way too too long because he's building Hyperland Git. So that's one of the packages. So I was like, I'll take care of the repository, just you take care of the rest. And we're collaborating like that. Other than that, I've been working, uh, I released my Zero Linux Christmas edition to a lot of success. Not many had any issues uh, except the two issues that were mentioned in the on the change log with Wayland where for whatever reason the do if you use the panel as a dock at the bottom on Wayland it it's if the application is in focus it stops responding and the uh, which the plasmoid that I use a compact shutdown also becomes unresponsive on or not unresponsive just doesn't do anything on Wayland but those are KDE issues so hopefully on plasma 6 those will be taken care of other than that I've been learning how to cook more and more because, yeah, I, I cook with my dad. This is a past activity. Hmm. That's not Linux related, but, hey, I, I wanted to throw that out there. That's all right. All right. Hip Dad, what about you? You been doing anything interesting this week? Not specifically in the open source. Uh, one of the things that uh, has always been a annoyance for me is when I'm downloading or updating uh, games in Steam, it always says 3.2 megabytes per second or Mbps by, yeah. And I'm supposed to have 28 megabytes per second with my provider. So I'm always like, why? So I found out through using BTOP that it shows uh, what they call, uh, it's either millibytes per second, and you can convert those into uh, your actual megabytes per second that you're getting. But I also learned that what your I, IPS, your um, provider gives you is millibytes per second, not megabytes per second, but they sell it as megabytes per second. 
So whatever they tell you you're getting, you're not getting it. So that's been my big, uh, I guess, epiphany this week, that they're still basically selling you uh, snake oil, just like with hard drives where they tell you you get 100 gigabytes and you only get 90.2. Yeah, it's always So that's been my big thing. So I'm still been going strong on GNOME. I've been trying to make it work for me. So I've been using Forge as a tiling extension so I can have tiling and it's it's fine. It's fine. It's it's not a tiling window manager. You can tell that the people who developed it really haven't spent a lot of time in tiling window managers or at least uh, anything outside of i3 like they've tr- they, it's, it's like they tried to emulate i3 and they've done an okay job for what it is but you can they, they had a fine needle to thread where they had to kind of create a tiling mechanism that worked well while still making it work very good with a you know with the gnome elements being able to drag and drop the windows and resize them with the mouse and stuff like that and that's usually not something you do with a window manager we usually use the key bindings so it's been okay is at least made it a little bit more usable for me. I did make a video about Forge in the past, and uh, I've been using it a little bit more in depth now. Uh, the one thing I've found that bugged me most about it is that they, their standard key bindings is that it are replicas of key bindings that are default in GNOME. So you have duplicates, and when you have duplicate key bindings in GNOME, it's really inconsistent over which one it actually chooses to listen to. Sometimes they'll choose the one that's in the GNOME software, Sometimes it will listen to the one that was set by the extensions, and you don't know really which one it ever is going to be, and that's kind of annoying. Uh, but, you know, after you, you spend some time with it, you can kind of get past that. It's been okay. I miss window managers, to be honest with you. I, I'm 11 days into my GNOME challenge. 11 days. Uh, and I still that means I still have like 119 or something left to go. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's gonna be a schlog. Uh, it has it has gotten better. It has gotten better than it was the first few days. Like I'm getting used to it. Uh, there are a few things that I really like. I I I liked having I, I like having the ability to put the computer to sleep, which is not something I usually set up or bother to set up in a window manager. So that's been nice, but not really a GNOME feature. Uh, I kind of in, have enjoyed setting up light and dark themes so I can switch between them if I want to. I wish that you could set a schedule, but you, you seem to have to do that manually and hit the button, which is fine. I think there's probably an extension for an ex- for a schedule. Uh, I have to look look into that, uh, but that'd be awesome. Uh, other than that, I've just been messing around with GNOME a lot. Oh, also, Linux Tech Geek has prompted me into doing an Emacs challenge again. So, I'm oh, using Emacs. okay. Yeah. Well, uh... uh... <laughs> I noticed in your video when you when you talked about GNOME, it was a very well done video. You, you were trying your best, not, and you made a lot of good points. But some of those points, when it comes to GNOME, the more extensions you use, the more you're digging yourself a hole. Let me see. But pulling this up on stream is probably not a great idea, but I have right now, and you, I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 11, 12, 13, 14 installed, but not all of them are enabled. Four, I only have 10 enabled. Well, yeah, 10 enabled. 10 enabled. That's uh, already a lot. Trust yeah. me. When I had 0G, I had 12, uh, and they were all enabled because I only included the ones I enabled. The, the problem it, with extensions is with every major release, the developers of those extensions will make Re, uh, not release updates they will fix them but they will keep them as betas on their githubs and for people to not regular people normies are not going to go understand how to go to github how to hunt for the alpha builds or the beta builds so they will end up with broken extensions or on un- not broken extensions they don't and here's something you need uh, I, I i wondered why you didn't mention in the video extensions don't break they stop working yes but they don't break your system you still, you still, and uh, ha- you will always have a functional system just without the extension. You got to remember, Steve. I haven't used GNOME long enough to see a different version of GNOME yet, so uh, I have no experience <laughs> with anything breaking. Yeah, the only uh, experience I had with extensions causing issues is with Knotless. Knotless, it would crash Knotless all the time. Certain extensions would. So that's one of the reasons I loved Knotless back in the day, but I don't like GNOME. I tried it, and it's just. It reminds me of Plasma 4. Huh? Plasma yeah. 4? Yeah, it drags. 
It drags. It's slow. It's resource uh, hog. Okay. Oh, yeah. yeah. Mm. It does use a lot of resources still. You th I thought that they had fixed that, but it still uses well over a gig at idle, which is... And that's without any extensions installed, by the way. That was, that was to begin with. So it, it, still, it still is quite heavy on the resources. But I have so much memory, it doesn't really it hasn't really phased me all that much. Uh, I will say that I'm glad that they haven't... Uh, they got rid of some of the like the animations. Because Gnome used to be like really heavy on the animations. Mm -hmm. Like super heavy. Uh, they've gotten rid of some of them. And the ones that they kept, they've sped up quite a bit. So it's made it feel faster, even if it's not actually faster so yeah the the thing that i'm going to have the hardest time with is that i visit unix porn on the discord quite often and i and oh. i have a channel right and i see all these people with these you know really nice setups and window managers and it's it's making me miss it even more so uh and uh, darth vader in the in the chest is nautilus is is the worst file manager it's nowadays yes it's the fastest guys it, it, at least in terms of of load times, if you want a, a really fast, like if you, you if you're if you're not like me and you open up a, a file manager to do your thing and then you close it, it's by far the fastest launching that I've ever seen. Like it's, you click it and it's open. Like it's it's amazing. Beyond that though, it has zero features. Like no, zero. Like like no. You, you said it zero. <laughs> it, like it has no features whatsoever. Uh, and especially if you're coming from. It was a culture shock for me because you guys remember I'm a Crusader user, <laughs> and Crusader has right. all the features. Going to that from that to Nautilus was a shock. I didn't last very long on Nautilus. I went from that to Thunar. Used Thunar for a little while, and then I was like, you know, if I'm if I'm gonna have Thunar installed, I'm just gonna go ahead and Crusader. install Crusader. I just, so I've installed <laughs> Crusader again, which of course meant that I redownloaded basically the entire Plasma stack. That's the problem. Uh, if you want something you like that comes from a different desktop environment, you, you will have to drag everything with it. Yep. yep. Oh, yeah. And a lot, a lot of uh, distros actually pin the desktop environment that uses the file manager with. So if like on Fedora, if you download uh, Thunar, it downloads Cinnamon like, along with it. If you download Nautilus, yep. it downloads Gnome, which I've always wanted like, what? Why are you doing that? That's yeah. just absolutely bonkers. All right. Let's go ahead and move on to the main topic then, shall we? Uh, so this week was my turn to choose a topic. So before before we jump into it, let me just kind of talk about the schedule a little bit. So we're going to do a topic this week, which is mine. Next week, we're playing a Linux trivia game, which I, I'm still working on setting up. So that's, that'll be my project for the rest of the week is getting that set up. That, that podcast will happen after... Wait a minute. Are we supposed, Steve? Are we supposed to announce? Has that that Linux tube? Yeah, thing yeah been, it's been announced already. All right. Yeah. So I'm not giving away a secret when I say that there's no. going to be a, a a live stream on my channel and several other Linux YouTubers' channels next week, hosted by the Linux tube. We're going to be doing a like a Linux YouTuber get together thing. I still have no clue what time that's actually supposed to start. It, by the way, does anybody actually? It, the email is coming. The, the email is coming. Uh, uh, but the most probably is going to be noon. That's what I heard. You, you guys time. Okay. Noon, maybe. All right. So anyway, so hopefully we'll have we'll know that for sure, and then I'll be able to get that scheduled on the channel so people kind of mm. know. Uh, <laughs> and we'll have the podcast after that. <laughs> yeah, and, and it, it would be a day full of like live streaming on this channel because that's gonna be simulcast. That that's gonna be simulcast, and then we'll do this podcast here. Uh, it'll be fun. Uh, so that that should be entertaining. Anyways, so now that the schedule's out of the way, if you want to watch it live, just head on over to youtube.com slash linuxcast or youtube.com. I don't know. Does Alex have his vanity URL? Probably. So youtube.com slash the Linux tube is, is going to be with the main event. So uh, anyways, um, the main topic. So this week, now I know I, we've talked about this somewhat before, but what I wanted to do today was ask one simple question. If you could change one thing software-wise, not community-wise, but software-wise about Linux, what would it be uh, and why? So Steve, you can go ahead and take us off first. Okay. If I could change one thing about Linux software-wise, is the damn NVIDIA drivers, and they're and they're the way I know they're uh, they're working and coming along fine, but it's too slow. Uh, and if they if Linux wants to get higher market share or more get more people to use it, we need a damn good NVIDIA drivers that work uh, on Wayland at least 
better than they do currently and fast because Wayland is moving fast. It's like the hare, the tortoise and the hare kind of thing. Nvidia is uh, thinking that it's slow, but it's going to win the race because Wayland is running way too fast. It's going to have issues. No. They have to be side by side and work at the same speed because uh, people are not very... Uh, I noticed that uh, people that who use Linux are not very patient. No. Oh. Yeah. So uh, people talk trash about NVIDIA and I can vouch for you that NVIDIA, when it wants to work, it works just fine. But the reason people give it uh, flack is because it's too slow and they got they ain't got no patience and that's something i need that i would dream to change like with, with uh, become rolling we get rolling release updates of nvidia drivers that are on par with everything that's going on today well i mean the nvidia thing is more like that they just don't it's not a priority for them right I and mean, they, they don't seem to I think they have people that want to make it a priority, but the uh, people that want to continue to make massive amounts of money are not concerned with it. They don't care. They have a department, a Linux d driver depart uh, uh, department. So, but I think they don't prior prioritize it, and they don't put a lot of staff members in it enough to w work as fast as we want them to. I guess. Here's my thing. I, I know that Wayland was something that was needed because Xorg no. is dead, old, and crusty, right? But Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> You're not Xorg hip dad. You're just hip dad. Anyways, the thing is is that NVIDIA was just dedicating themselves to actually working well on Linux, and then the Linux community pulled the rug out from underneath them and said, we're going to change everything. You know, True. we're, we're going to change the display server and you got to completely start over again, basically, if you want this thing to work. And because NVIDIA is NVIDIA and they don't really communicate really well with the Linux community and the Linux developers, or at least it seems like they don't, it feels like they got, like, started way late when it came to Wayland. Like, they didn't realize that Wayland was ever going to be, like, the, the thing until it was basically already the thing. So... Like, if you just think about it, the NVIDIA support for Wayland was absolute garbage. Like, nobody could actually use it. Just a couple of years ago, even when uh, Ubuntu decided that they were going to try to set Wayland as the default session on one of the interim releases of Ubuntu, at that point, the NVIDIA support was still really, really bad. Um, yep. And it... it, it has gotten better obviously over the last couple of years, but it feels like they got like a really late start on it, and that's the reason why. Plus, add on top of that that their driver department is probably like one dude in a in a closet somewhere. <laughs> I, I you know it's probably it's why the reason why that the the open source drivers right has been they've been trying to focus on those more and more. To we d we as we as users and distro maintainers and developers in in the Linux world tend to be doing the work for them because at least the testing part, there's a lot of users uh, I met online that oh, they made it their mission to test each and every driver of uh, NVIDIA driver with each and every kernel that currently exists in, in, and used by, uh, by everyone. And they test them from VRR to uh, VSync to a triple monitor, quadruple monitor, a single monitor. They do a lot of benchmarking and various games here and there, Proton and everything. We do it for them. And uh, like, I'll give you an example of people doing a better job than NVIDIA, TKG. And some people are going to give me flack for that. But guess what? TKG are 100% so, uh, supported by Arch. They, ha they, they even have their own wiki page. They have their own documentation, everything on the Arch website. So uh, they're fully supported and backed by Arch. So And they release their own versions. They have a script where you can build your own, their customized version of the NVIDIA driver. And guess what? Combine it with their kernel. It works better than the NVIDIA drivers. 
they they even have their own version of uh, OpenGL NVIDIA, EGL NVIDIA. They even replaced the, the default one by Arch with their version, and it works marvels. No 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 wonder what Groyus Agro chose it over the regular NVIDIA drivers in Nobara. Uh, and also, the one of the TKG maintainers, I think, if I'm not wrong, works with Valve. So it's taking uh, work by other people other than the nvidia people unpaid people in the free in the fast world to make their uh, uh, large companies drivers better as is usually why can't the that case. company do it well what <laughs> what they need to do is just pay the tkg guys to do it just yeah hire them <laughs> it's usually the way it hire ends, them ends up going help us yeah. hire them what graphics card do you have hip dad I have a uh, 3060 Ti Asus uh, ROG Strix. So do you Rog use Strix. Wayland as your default session in Plasma? Or do you use Xorg? I took my dunce hat off uh, earlier. No, I don't use Wayland. It's not that I hate it. It's just the only thing I tried Wayland in KDE se session just to see if it worked. And it worked, but it doesn't give me the ability to control my settings with my monitors and stuff in the nvidia settings panel but one thing i did notice is the mouse movements in wayland are so crispy you can yeah, tell the difference they're smooth. so yeah oh yeah it's just yeah it's way better than zorg <laughs> i for example got got hooked on wayland i keep visiting it more often than i want to although x11 is still my default but because of the mouse movements, and I can finally use my 144 hertz display. <laughs> I've had it for what 10 years. Yeah, that's the first time. That's the first time I get to use it uh, on Linux. And well, 144. I mean, that's why I bought the 3060 Ti. Is the the ROG Strix, the Asus ROG Strix, is because it had two HDMI 2.1 ports. So it advanced. I use a 65 inch uh, TV LG TV for my main screen. And once I switched to that card and I could do 2.1 HDMI, I was able to go from 60 hertz to 120 hertz on the 65-inch screen. But where does it crap the bed is when you start to try to game or no. share screens? No. On Wayland, I'm saying. Oh, oh, you mean Wayland. Okay, yeah. Yeah. I don't, I don't know that. Nvidia and Wayland. That uh, yeah. Uh, uh, Nvidia and Wayland, if you try to game, some games will crash if you try to share a window or monitor it will crash so nvidia still has a lot to, to, and i'm not saying only nvidia there's all the desktop environments uh, it, it takes two as they say it takes two to tango so it takes mm -hmm. the system plus the uh, the driver to work hand in hand to shake hands and give you a better experience but there's a disconnect okay Hip Dad, what if you could change one thing about Linux software wise, what would it be? The one thing that every operating system needs to be fixed software wise. Hibernation <laughs> and screen shutdown. Yeah, I agree. Sleep. Sleep mode. It's always been shit from the get go. Even in MS DOS and CPM eighty. I mean, they've ne they've hibernation and uh sleep mode has been flawed from the beginning and they just don't seem to care. And what I have to do, I mean, what I choose to do is I go and I uh, go into um, shutdown mode. Let me see. I don't know if you actually call it. I'd go to, uh, yeah, sleep mode manually on my computer. And as soon as it goes quiet, then I manually shut down all my screens with my remote for my two TV screens and then hit the button on the little 20 inch off to the right. And then before I start back up, I make sure I don't touch the mouse or anything, and I start all my monitors, then I touch the mouse. If I do it any way different than that, all my uh, NVIDIA settings are bonked or borked or whatever you want to call it. So that's that's the one thing. I, I cross the board. I mean, they really need to work on the sleep mode and the hibernation. That's one of the things that I've been most surprised about with GNOME is how well hibernation has worked now you get granted i'm not on nvidia so i don't have to worry about the nvidia settings or anything like that i have a an amd card uh, but normally when i'm in a desktop environment 
su suspend or hibernate, neither one of them work at all. And for years, I've been having problems with my monitors going to sleep. Usually, you because know, usually the way I have it set up is I have my computer just stay on, and then the monitors just turn off after a certain amount of time. The only places that that actually works is in Qtile, i3, DWM, Xmonad, basically any X org window manager. It works fine. The moment I go into a Wayland compositor or into any desktop environment, it immediately stops working. Now, in Plasma, if I use the Xorg session, I can kill K screen 2 and it works. Now, you're not supposed to have to kill K screen 2 in order to, for that to, to work, but that will work. In the Wayland session, it still won't work even if you do kill K screen. And then in GNOME, I haven't had any success at all in getting the monitors just to go to sleep. But hibernation has worked really well, which has been a surprise for me. Uh, but you're right. That is a mess. And on laptops, it's worse. <laughs> like, yeah. Like, like, the thing is, like, you guys both use Windows probably in the past, probably on a laptop. You close a laptop on, on, on a Mac or on a, on a Windows PC, it goes to sleep, right? And you, you can come back like a day later and you still have, you know, 50, 60% of your battery left. It, sure, it uses some, but it doesn't use very much. On Linux, you close that window, it may turn the, the screen off, but you come back to it a couple hours later, it's dead. Because uh, it's just fully running there and it, it just doesn't work now you can obviously you know do some work to get it to work a little bit better but it's still it's it's not good so like i don't use my one of my laptops i don't use it very often but i always just close yeah. the screen because i'm not gonna go through the process well, of shutting it down the good news the, the good news on kde is that k screen 2 is no longer it doesn't it, they no longer it's no longer part of kde uh, or it's no longer gonna be part of KDE as as of uh, Plasma Six. It's going to be K Screen Two, uh, K Screen. Uh, I mean K Win. So uh, K Win is going to be taken over, uh, and hopefully that will be fixed. Uh, for me, my screen stopped going to sleep as soon as I went into a uh, <clears throat> into Hyperland. On KDE uh, KDE Wayland, they still go to sleep. I don't have an issue with them going to sleep. I don't know. I'm I'm kind of lucky, I guess. Uh, never had that issue, nor on Wayland, nor on Xorg. But on Hyperland, however, impossible to get them to sleep. And I don't know anything about Hyperland yet. I don't know enough. I just got the dot files set up, set up my monitors the way I want them in the uh, order that I want them to be. And I didn't touch it since. Because well, I'm you, too afraid to break anything. Hyperland doesn't have it built in by default. You have to download Sway Idle in order for it to work. And then I think I will have to check if uh, if he included it or not. If he didn't, then I'll try it and see. Then right. it's just it's just executed in your config file, and you can set the the delay for whatever. And then it just uses DPMS. I think is DPMS or DKMS, D, whatever one of those things, to uh, put the screen to sleep and bring it back on. Uh, it does not obviously work for me, uh, but that's the way that it's supposed to be done. Um, just quick, one of the things that, uh, well, one of the many things that I've noticed over the years is even with Windows and their sleep mode and hibernation and everything, people would, uh, well, my mom in particular, she kept having problems with her computer freezing. When she would go to sit back down to it and wake it up, it would be frozen. She would have to shut it off and restart the whole thing. And so she would, not knowing, she would just take it to uh, the freak squad at uh, worst buys and uh, she would uh, have them look at it and they would say, well, we need to uh, uh, reinstall the whole operating system and you're going to have to have Norton uh, internet suites because you're probably infected. No, do, 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 do. And I went with them one time. I said, you don't put none of that crap on that computer. Oh yeah, but we have to, sir. I said, no, you don't have to. You don't put it on there. I'm telling you right now, you put it on there. I'm coming after you. <laughs> and uh, they didn't put it on, and but I ended up just disabling hibernation sleep mode, just saying never, you know, just put it, you know, just have it so it never engages itself, and it fixed it, never froze again. Yeah, it's definitely something that computers have a problem with, and you think that I think out of all the operating systems, Mac does it the best, where it's just yep. 
you know, you turn, you shut the lid or whatever, and it turn it back on. It, just, it lives for weeks. Yeah. It lives for weeks. Like it never dies. Um, doesn't use any power while it's closed. Just does it way better. So, th- one of the things that the people, the Linux dev should do is just go figure out how Mac has done it. The thing is that like, Mac did it before they switched to ARM. They did it with the Intel stuff, so they could still do it with x86 yep. if they wanted to. So you just have to go figure out how Mac does it and then implement it on Linux. Now, obviously, not a developer, so it's probably harder than... I'm sure that they've tried to make this better, but it's just years and years. This is the one area, you're right, Hibbed, that this is just... They haven't fixed it yet. And I think it, I think it's hard because the display man, the display server situation has been in flux for 10 years. You know, x yeah. has been on his dying breath for a long time. Wayland hasn't... Eh, there's been more pressing matters to get Wayland to work because you have to deal with the NVIDIA stuff. You have to worry about getting everything to actually work before you can deal with the little piddly stuff. Um, so I mean, maybe now that Wayland's kind of settling into its groove, maybe that's something they can fix, but I don't know. But it's laptops are very important. People care about laptops. People buy hardware laptops. So. Mm-hmm. And, and I must say that all the Linux laptops that are coming out these days, they have hibernation and everything working just fine because the people who made the hardware are the people, well, not made the hardware, but configured the hardware are the people who created the distro. Mm-hmm. They optimized the distro to the hardware. To the that specific they, hard- uh, that yeah, is, uh, that's one yeah. thing that Apple has going for it, right, is that they make the hardware and yeah. the software. They have the whole stack. We need more of that. We need more of that. It, it'd make you think that the Pop! OS guys would be doing a very good job of making Sleep and Hibernate work on their machines. Oh, Pop! OS. No, but, Pop! OS is different. It's, I'm talking about the slim people, slim book people. And... Well, Pop! OS is owned by System76, which does their own h- hardware, Steve. I know. But, the, oh, wait. What? Uh, yeah, System76. Yeah, I completely forgot about that. I spaced out. This is my laptop. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dude. You have an iMac, a classic iMac? I have six of them. Oh, send me one. What could you What could you possibly need six of them for? What, what do you, do you To you see f- which one of them's work. Two of them worked out of the six. Did you get like a, a, ba- a ba- parts batch from e- eBay? Is that what you got those from? No, from the college I work at. They oh. were going to destroy them. So I just said, hey, I'll take them. I'll take them. Bring them all right, all right. So the one thing that I would fix about Linux, if I had the chance, and this is going to be very nerdy, guys, just deal with me, is that I would have a display manager that actually works. <laughs> okay, so and like I said, this is very nerdy, very very niche, but. I've had so many problems with every single display manager. So, so when I talk about display manager, that's what we call a login manager. For those of you guys who don't know, it's the thing you, when you log, boot into your Linux machine, you get the password prompt on. That's the display manager. Yeah. Um, yeah. And uh, no matter which one that I use, they all have problems. And SDDM yeah. works fine for me with KDE. Yeah. Well, it doesn't work fine for me. Uh, and I don't use KDE. Okay. Uh, right. I, I, uh, right now I'm using GDM. And that seems to be the most stable, but it's also, at, in GNOME fashion, the least functional out of all of them. Uh, and it's either you use the Wayland version of GDM or you don't use the Wayland version of GDM. You can't switch back and forth. Uh, so that's hard, hard on the machine. Uh, and then, or at least that's the way, the way that it seems to be. And then I've tried LightDM. That seems to be, anybody, I don't know if this is the truth, but it feels like LightDM has been left in the dust. It just kind of is mm-hmm. there, hasn't... It's yeah. disappearing. It's not even a suggestion anymore. Yeah. It hasn't received... It, uh, since I maintain it on my repositories, or I, I used to for XFCE, it hasn't received an update in God knows how long. Yeah, so there's that, and then there's SDDM. That gets updated all the damn time, and it's always breaking. So... Well, I... SDDM used to break all the time with Kubuntu, but, but I used it in... Mate once, but ever since I've been in Arco Linux, it hasn't broken, and I've changed. You, you can't, know, you can't judge anything on Arco Linux because Eric has some kind of magic voodoo or something with that distro. Um, <laughs> well, it's your fault. I know. I'll take that blame. <laughs> yeah. What's my fault? What's my fault again? <laughs> well, it was your fault that I'm using Arco Linux. I was on Kubuntu and I was having little itty bitty issues. 
and thinking about reinstalling everything, then you had your six months challenge. And I was okay with Kubuntu, but I got started having problems and I was two months past your start gate and I went ahead and Stefan suggested I go to Arco and I've been with Arco ever since. I'm on nine months. It's a good distro. If he could just do a website. Oh, it's solid. If he could just do a website, huh? that would be. The... Yeah, his his website sucks. <laughs> it's really yeah. bad. He also needs to stop putting. <laughs> Ar he also needs to stop putting Arco Linux in a number in front of every single YouTube video that he makes. Like I know he probably mm -hmm. does that to like like do an index or whatever, but it just makes it really hard for like to search through those because it cuts off the rest of the title and stuff. But other than that, the distro is awesome. If I were to use an Arch-based distro, that's probably the one that I'd use. But also, OpenSUSE. <laughs> yep. All right, and there's there's the lie I, display manager. You like that one? It's hard to get up and running and actually keep up and running. And at least when I tried it back when I did my video on it, it doesn't really work with Wayland all that well. So if you're gonna if you're gonna use Wayland, you can't use it. Well, Zany did, used it with Wayland. Didn't well, it, he? With his... it's possible that it's been updated. You guys, remember I haven't done a. I haven't tried it in two oh. years, so it's probably maybe it's been updated and it's, it works better with Wayland now than it did when I tried it. But when I tried it, it was pretty much XORG only. But maybe it's time to try it again because GDM has been causing me some issues. It's, it's, for whatever reason, it flickers. Like when I first boot into the computer, it will flash. Like it, it will come up and then it will go. Like it feels like it's going to go back to the TTY and then it'll come back up again. Then then it can log in, uh, and I don't understand why. Uh, it, I've had that uh, on zero G. I've had that all the time. It's just it's a it's a weird situation, yeah. and it's that's the thing. It's like if, what I want, and this is a typical elitist Linux user asking for things that he can't support. Uh, but why can't we just have one that works? Why do we need seven that are half-assed? You know, let's just choose one, yeah. and yeah. Uh, you know, work on that one until it's fixed and and just works. They should have one called UDM, Universal Display yeah. Manager. Like, let's just, yeah, let's just have one that works. And I don't care which one it is. Like, they all have pros and cons. The, the, I think GDM is probably the prettiest one. Obviously, SDDM is the most customizable one. LightDM is the crustiest one. Uh, <laughs> you know, choose one. Don't care which one. Just make it work and make it not have so many issues. Uh, one of the things. When I was distro hopping a lot, a lot of times I would have this problem, especially when I was using LightDM, because a lot of the, uh, I'd almost always choose the XFC version of whatever distro I was hopping to, so that would always come with LightDM. And a lot of times when I was distro hopping a lot, I would have a situation where I would get a distro installed, it would install fine, I would update for the first time after installation, reboot the computer, because it usually has a kernel thing to update, and then when I boot back in, LightDM wouldn't launch. Like it happened time and time and time again, mm -hmm. where it would boot into a black screen with a little blinking cursor up in the upper left-hand corner. Uh, and you know, eventually I did figure out a way to fix that, but it was just so annoying. And you know, I've had problems with GDM, SDDM always crash, it always crashes on me. Sometimes you know, every once in a while I'll go through a period of where it's nice and stable, then they'll do an update and it'll start crashing again. And really, I just this is a piece of software that can't be all that complicated. How can it possibly be in the situation we're in now where it just doesn't really work 100% of the time? Like, that's the one piece. It really does have to work, right? Isn't there, uh, aren't there some people that don't even use any uh, display managers, logins? Loads of people. Yeah, they just use either StartX or they execute their Wayland compositor via the terminal. Uh, I could be that guy, but I use too many different window managers and desktop environments, so it's it's a little harder yeah. for me. But if you're just going to use one, just yeah, start X or whatever is probably the way to go. Uh, Arch Penguin, I know that my camera is flashing green. It's been doing it the whole time. Uh, Brio and Discord don't go together. There's nothing I can do to fix it other than use the uh, VL42 loopback or whatever the hell it is, and I'm too uh, uninterested in setting that up. I used to have to deal with that all the time back when I did streaming on Ustream. Maybe maybe that's another thing that I should say. Uh, I would fix uh, the Brio support for Linux, <laughs> just make it actually work. Uh, but or or I could just you know get a different camera. But I'm too cheap for that. Uh, anyway, so that is the things that we'd change about Linux. I think we could probably go around and do another round, but I think that's good enough. And then uh, we'll go ahead and move on to the the last section. So uh, under protest, I have been 
told I'm changing the name of the section, and this is now week three. And last week, I don't know if you guys noticed, but I switch, I, I, uh, I tripped up a little bit and kept calling it Thingies of the Week. It's no longer called Thingies of the Week. It's called <sighs> Nuggies of the Week. <laughs> yeah. Uh, anyways, if you want to support the show, you can head on over and get yourself a Nuggies t-shirt, shop.thelinkscast.org. Uh, it would lessen the pain of me having to call these things nuggies. It really would. Uh, anyways, head on over to the, to the shop and get one of those. Limited time only. Uh, Steve, uh, your nuggie of the week. My nuggie of the week is Warehouse. Warehouse is a flat pack to manage flat packs. Simple as that. It allows you to add remotes, remove remotes, add, uh, I mean, not install applications, uninstall applications, delete their data, and check uh, for application, uh, if the application is still working or not, or run the application within this app. So it's a very, very simple app. It's basically you delete, once you click the delete button, it will ask you if you want to delete the data as well, it will get rid of the data. So no more having to run flat back, remove unused. That's really cool. I really wish that it had a, like a front end for FlatHub too. That'd be so awesome if you just just make it a store. Just go the whole route. Um, that, yeah, I think I, I this is a good pro- proposition. I, I will. I might uh, send it upstream. Like you already have the you have the uninstall mechanism. Just have the install mechanism, so I don't have to go yeah. go to the terminal to install these things. Because. because Especially for people who don't use, you know, GNOME software or Discover or whatever, it'd be nice to have a a front end for FlatHub, you know, that just kind of comes separate from having to use GNOME software or Discover, because I don't have either one of those things installed, and I really don't want to have to have those things installed. It'd be nice just to be able to, you know, have a front end for FlatHub. Well, there's a lot of front ends for FlatHub. You got Pamac, you got Bai, uh, and uh different ones but uh, not an official one but this one looks promising and the filter button that was on the top uh, that is on the top left allows you to see also run times you know how people keep complaining or you we all keep complaining about i have three copies of this runtime five copies of that runtime well guess what you can clean it up with this one with this tool, wouldn't that break your? Because so, I mean, the the flat packs are actually. Looking... It will tell you. It will. T- it, it's pr- it protect. It's protect. It, it, it has a protection pr- mechanism mechanism in place. It will not remove anything that would break anything on your system. Okay. Huh. And one last thing, it has. It has the ability to downgrade, pin, and do not up do not update, kind of thing. It's got a lot of options. This is a very nice tool. It's what the whole thing is twenty three megabytes. Oh, so cool! People I, don't. I do have that in a uh, one of my tabs, so I can make a video on it. So it sounds cool. All right. Uh, I know that you joined us on a kind of a off the wing kind of thing, Hip Dad. But do you have a nuggy to share with us? Uh, yeah. If anybody has uh, Logitech. Uh mice and they have like the light speed g502 or whatever and they have a lot of buttons to configure and you can change the dpi settings and everything piper is uh software that you can get for linux and when you set it up you can set your uh keystrokes on your buttons on your mouse uh you can set your dpi you can do a lot of cool stuff with it and it works but it doesn't keep the configuration settings. You reboot your computer, you got to do it all over again. And if you don't know, you have, if you don't remember to do it all over again, you're sitting there playing a game or something, you accidentally click a resolution key on your mouse and it completely changes your resolution and your mouse is flying all over the place. So I, my nuggie of the week is don't use Piper. <laughs> okay. You, you can't set that up so that it runs like uh, automatically at startup so that you can... Nope. Oh, that's a shame. It doesn't have a setting for that. Or you can you can create your own you can create your own. Uh, yeah, but I don't think it will keep the actual configuration each time. Mm-hmm. You can get it to start, but it's not saving the configuration. See, I had this. I don't think I had the same problem. There was one, and this might be maybe it's an offshoot of it. I don't know. There was one called KeyMapper, 
a while ago I did it actually did a thingy of the week on it and I used it for the Elecom huge uh, that has a couple extra buttons and that too would would necessitate you to set it up every single time you started the service even though it had like a uh, even though it had a service that you could start at the beginning of the of the of, of you know at boot it wouldn't actually load in the like set a configuration file for it it just loaded the the system and it didn't load the the button setup so that was annoying so i just stopped i gave up i was like it's not worth it i never used those buttons anyways so screw it yeah, it was it was kind of yeah. dis- it was kind of disappointing yeah, I mean, I've I've actually got all these buttons on my mouse, and it's a hundred fifty dollar mouse, and I don't need any of those extra buttons. Should've but it's a nice mouse. Yeah, um, I think I have three extra buttons on mine, and uh, I never get to use them because setting them up is pretty hard. All right, so my thingy of the week, if I can actually remember what it was, it is called <laughs> Vitals, and it is a GNOME extension, basically. And uh, let me see if I can actually show you. It's actually down here in in the uh, left hand corner of this. Basically, what it is, it goes in your bar on GNOME and shows you all the vitals for the stuff. So it gives you temperature, voltage, fan, memory, processor stats, uh, system, and you you can change what's actually being displayed on the bar itself. So if you wanted to show just one processor core, you could do that. If you wanted to show the allocated or available or cached memory whatever you want to show you can do that uh, it also gives you shortcuts to uh, the system monitor and everything like that right there so if you want to click on that and it's really nice and basically i just have it set up so that it shows the up and download speeds and that, or not the speeds but the total bandwidth that it's used for the day and then it has the up, down, up time and the memory current memory usage right now i'm using 15.7 gigabytes of memory yeah that's OBS for you. What, what, what's the name of the extension? It's called Vitals. It, it sounds to me like it's a it's a fork of Pop Hat. This is what I used to use on Zero G. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know anything about that. All I know is that it's Vitals. Uh, I found out from it from uh, Linux Scoop. He did the. They did a um uh. a, like a rice of GNOME, and I followed that tutorial, and this came along with it. I was like, oh, that's pretty cool. So I've been using it. It's awesome. Yep. Anyways, that's my th- nuggie of the week, uh, and that's the nuggies of the week. So before we jump into the the goodbyes, we should talk about our contact information. Uh, I'm. You can follow me and find all my stuff at the linuxcast.org. That's the website. That's probably the best place to find the contact information and all the stuff. There you'll find previous episodes when I remember to upload them. Uh, <laughs> I haven't got there yet. <laughs> uh, I, I, I'll. I'll bring that back up to date here very, very soon, I promise. Uh, But you can also find previous blog posts that I posted there as well. Uh, You can find Steve. He's on Mastodon at Fossodon.org slash at Zero Linux. That's zero with an X, not a Z. Uh, You can also, he has a YouTube channel on Discord and stuff like that. We'll we'll link to that in the contact page as well. Uh, Hibdad, do you have something you want to throw out there for contact information? Mm, You can usually find me in Zany's Discord or... Matt's Discord or uh, Zero Linux Discord. That's you know, or Josh, uh, Tenley G, Tenley J, uh, Discord. He's he's on Discord a lot. He he and he's in voice chat a lot. So he, you guys want to go chat with chat with him? He's usually on voice chat somewhere along the line. Sometimes he's there just yeah. by him hanging out by himself, talking yep. himself, waiting for Kudu to show up. <laughs> All right. Uh, you can find all of our contact information by heading on over to the website, the linuxcast.org slash contact. There you'll find links to all of the boys' stuff, along with Tyler's and, and Josh's uh, as well. You can support me on Patreon at patreon.com slash linuxcast. I'm also on Kofi. You can head on over to the merch shop where you'll find uh, the Nuggies t-shirt, other t-shirts, hoodies, hats. Uh, there's a really awesome desk mat. I actually have one here. I can't show it on camera, but it's a really, really freaking cool. Uh, you can head on over there to shop.onlyscast.org. All that stuff goes directly to help the, the, the channel. So I really do appreciate that. Uh, we record this live every Saturday at 3 o'clock p.m. Eastern time. But uh, just a reminder that next week is the last episode of the year. Yeah, and I have uh, a quick announcement. Uh, the Linux Tubes podcast has been canceled oh. for today. Wow. Uh, Alex is sick. He can't talk. Get well better, Alex. Yep. Send him nuggets. Yes. <laughs> Those are definitely good for a sure throat. Uh, <laughs> anyways, 
before we go, we should take a moment to thank my current patrons. Thanks to everybody who does support me on Patreon and YouTube and Kofi. I really do appreciate that. You guys are all absolutely amazing. Without you, the challenge just would not be anywhere near where it is right now. So thank you so very much for your support. I truly do appreciate it. Again, patreon.com slash LinuxCast if you'd like to join us. And uh, we'll see you all next time. Next week will be the last episode of the year. It should be really, really fun. So we'll see you all then. Thank you. Oh, by the way, thank you, Hip Dad, for joining us or stepping in and filling the shoes of two slackers who couldn't show up for the day. No problem. I'll clean up nicer next time. No, well, you, you didn't have much of a choice. You didn't have much of a, a warning. It was like, hey, five minutes from now, you want to do a podcast? Yeah. <laughs> Anyways, we'll see you guys next time. Take care.